Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. In this episode, we're going to deal with Gabby Petito's last photo. What does it tell us? Now, those familiar with true crime know the importance and significance of the last photo. We've seen it in the John Bonnet Ramsey case, in the Madeleine McCann case, in the Summer Wells case. The last photo can play a valuable role in fleshing out the timeline by anchoring the people in terms of time, place, and to some extent dynamics. What are they wearing? What are they doing? How do they appear? Are they well? What are they feeling? What are they thinking? We are fortunate in this instance to not only have a stream of photos documenting their trip, but Brian Laurie's Instagram account as well to rely on. And so what we're going to start off with is Gabby's last photo. Gabby's last photo actually appears at the end of a series of seven photos. But before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment and let's get started. So of those seven photos in Gabby's last series, six of them are backgrounded with patterns of the monarch butterfly wings. It's, it's probably the most recognized butterfly in the world. You get them all over the world as well. And the monarch butterfly, incidentally, is famous for its southward migrations, covering thousands of miles each fall. Ironically, in this final photo series, Gabby's caption for the series is Happy Halloween, just that, including emoticons for a fly and an orange Halloween pumpkin. This was posted on August 26th, and Gabby was about a month and a week uh, premature of actual Halloween, a date she would never live to see. So what do we see in these photos of Gabby? You know, she's smiling, she's got glasses perched on her head, she looks happy, it's a sunny day, there are no signs of bruising on her arms or anywhere else, no signs of tears, and not only that, there are quite a few photos, not as though there's only one photo. So it's almost like back to normal, you know, everything's good, everything's going well again with this couple. They're back kind of thing. Now, I think it's very likely Gabby died either later the same day that these photos went up, or the next day, August 27th, when Brian and the Ford Transit van were seen loitering around the Spread Creek campsite near the Grand Tetons in Wyoming. Now, now bear in mind, although the van was seen there and Brian was seen there, Gabby was never seen in that particular area. So was she alive when she got there and something happened, or did something else happen to her somewhere else? There are six photos of Gabby, obviously modeling herself and appearing to model clothing and an embroidered pumpkin against a mostly white and black polka dot background. And then there's the seventh and final image. We see Gabby out of focus. We see unusually, because they're not too many, it's kind of a selfie of her that is sort of out of focus. And I don't know, there's something emblematic about the photo, the hat, um, you know, who is Gabby? Gabby kind of going out of focus. Gabby sort of blending in with the background. And what is the background? Um, it does look like it might be a, su a souvenir shop or something similar, rather than, say, a hotel, bathroom, or, or any kind of bathroom. Perhaps the most noteworthy thing about this series isn't what one sees, but when it appears. Prior to the August 26th series, there's a long gap of seven days. That post, dated August 16th, so in terms of the next post, refers directly to Bizarre Design, at Bizarre Design, that's Brian. And then there's another long gap to the photo series from August 12th, the day of the Moab incident. More than likely, the August 12th series was taken on August 11th or sooner, and Gabby actually refers to you know, photos being taken on the Monday. And as far as I know, the Monday was actually, the prior Monday was actually the 9th of August. So at least two or three days after these photos were taken, they were only put up on Instagram. And so this is the caption that Gabby wrote to this particular series of photos taken, uh, well, posted the day, the day of the Moab incident. 
And this is again quoting from Instagram. After waiting in a short line for some photos under the arch early Monday morning, we wanted to find a place to relax and draw while still admiring the arch, but also get away from the crowd that kept growing as the day went on. We walked just a little past the arch where the rock is at such an angle it appears impossible to walk on, but being such experienced hikers, I had confidence that I could make it! Exclamation mark. While at Bizarre Design, that's Brian, climbed down some steep slopes with a camera, I shimmied my way along a thin, flat, narrow line that led directly to a big, flat rock with the absolute most beautiful view from directly underneath the arch. After taking a few cool photos of each other, at Bizarre Design and I sat drawing and enjoying the nature without seeing anybody who was online or taking photos. It's quite an interesting um, kind of reference there, you know, about, you know, they were enjoying nature without seeing anyone who was online, almost as though they sort of eschew, um, look down their noses at someone who's online, you know, or someone who's taking photos. They're doing the same thing. Um, it, it's almost like, well, what we're doing is okay, um, but what everyone else is doing is not really right. We'll come to something similar with Brian, where he sort of talks about, um, you know, the commercial world and, and uh, you know, excess and things like that. But bear in mind, traveling across America in a, in a car isn't exactly environmentally friendly. Uh, I'm not criticizing them because I've also just done the same thing. I'm just saying, if you're going to take this standpoint that people are wrong to do certain things, well, then you've also got to look at yourself and ask, you know, are you doing the same thing? And I guess they could make the argument saying, well, they were, but but less so and more conscientious. And that's 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 a fairly good counter argument. So she goes on to say, it felt like we had the entire delicate arch to ourselves. We've got to spend about two hours relaxing here on this side of the arch with nobody bothering us, except this one guy who saw us and thought he could do it too. Many people who spotted us were contemplating how we made it here, shouting things like, wow, you guys must be crazy. One guy started to uh, come in our direction, talking, oh, sorry, I think that should be taking, so a bit of a spelling mistake there, taking the same thin, narrow way along the rock as I did, and he got stuck, stuck in fear of not knowing where to put his feet to climb out. Um, at Bizarre Design and I helped him, so Brian and Gabby helped him climb back to his wife who was laughing hysterically, giving us a big thumbs up. This particular caption is filled with exclamation marks. By the way, if you're hearing a funny noise in the background, that's my dog snoring on my lap. It's not me. In the last few photos, you can see what I mean by a thin, narrow line. There was no path to the flat rock that sat perfectly level out of the steep angled side of what's basically a cliff. So I do not recommend trying this yourself. Another exclamation mark. Rock climbing is dangerous, exclamation mark. That guy we had to help off the edge whacked me with his walking stick while I was helping him back up, exclamation mark. We are athletic and very experienced hikers and have high confidence for rock climbing, exclamation mark. Do not try this at home, exclamation mark. And then... I guess she credits at Bizarre Design for taking the photos. Now, what's really interesting with this caption is contrasting, you know, where she talks about having high confidence and contrasting that with the notion of Gabby suffering from anxiety. I mean, look at what she's doing. She's doing something that other normal people can't do. She's shimming along a sheer cliff face. And it is quite dangerous and other people aren't able to do it with the same sense of of calm. And yet Gabby is supposed to be suffering from anxiety. Well, clearly not in the outdoor sense. So in what sense was she suffering from anxiety? You also get, kind of get a sense that Brian was perhaps pushing her or encouraging her in a certain way. And that they're quite an adventurous couple but also in, in certain ways quite an odd couple wanting to keep to themselves. There's another almost two-week gap to more images until we reach this one, Mesa Arch, captioned with the hashtag um, live more with less. And that seems to be uh, Gabby taking a leaf out of Brian's book, this whole idea of minimalism. 
If I'm not mistaken, this is also the final image of Gabby posing with Brian as a couple. In the photo, her midriff and chest are pulled slightly away from him, and his shoulders are also angled slightly away from hers. It's difficult what to make of it. Is that just a normal pose? But they do seem to be, although they almost seem joined at the hip, their upper bodies seem to be pulled to some extent away from one another. And, and we do know that at this point, which is, you know, um, July the 31st, um, I think some of the arguing had taken place. This is about a month into their journey together. And um, less than four weeks later, Gabby would be deceased. And less than two months after this image, Brian would be on the run, a fugitive from the law in a national park in Florida, as well as a potential suspect in her homicide. And I mean, that is the case right now. Interestingly, there appear to be absolutely no comments to any of these images in real time unless they've been deleted. So it's difficult to say, you know, whether family members or friends commented on these images at the time, were they getting any traction when they when they put these images up? Did family members just look at them and say nothing? What is actually going on? And because of that, it's difficult to say what social media made of their efforts in real time or what they made of their chances for success building a name for themselves as influencers, right? I do get the impression that they were doing it kind of mostly on Instagram and I, I don't really get the sense that they, they were getting much attention. They certainly weren't, they weren't posting regularly. I think they needed to be posting a lot more. And I think the other thing is, I think that they thought, well, let's try YouTube. And and then they, they did a YouTube video um, at some point on the trip as well. But the frequency is, is really, um, you know, they, they may have taken a note out of other Instagrammers who don't post that often, but those people already have an, a following. And in order to get a following, I think you've got to start posting fairly frequently. Although you might, might make the argument um, quality, not quantity. Well, at the, you know, halfway point through a four-month trip, you might be thinking, well, we're halfway through this trip. Um, you know, what do we have to show for our efforts? Incidentally, here's a South African channel, Camps Bay Girl. I think they've got about 150,000 followers. It's not huge in the Instagram sense, but it's certainly successful. But compare what you see in these images to what you see on Gabby's Instagram. Would Gabby or Gabby and Brian have reached this level on social media and in terms of their relationship? W one thing that may have been a bone of contention was if you think of Camps Bay Girl, it's one Instagram account for two people essentially. And most of the images in that account are of Camps Bay Girl. And then a couple are of um, herself and her partner and virtually none just of the partner of a male friend right now think about Gabby and Brian they have separate Instagram accounts and so it's kind of like um, a photo of her and then a photo of him and a photo of her and a photo of him kind of thing and so, so one's got to think you know if they are engaged why wouldn't they have merged their accounts kind of thing in any event, let's go on to Brian's last photo. Now, Brian's last image was posted on August 13th, one day after the Moab incident. It's possible he did this during the timeout between himself and Gabby at the hotel. Perhaps he didn't have much to do, and so he went through some of the photos on his phone and did something with them. And so a series of five photos, obviously photographed by Gabby, appear of Brian posing besides arches, trees, etc. It's hard to know whether Brian posted any more images after this and then deleted them, but we do know he has been selectively removing some of his social media since Gabby's disappearance. Now, the following lengthy caption appears beside Brian's final post, and through it we get a sense of the real Brian Laundry. And so this is what he writes. Humans are primates, great apes in fact, but I don't know all how great we are as a species. 
chimpanzees share 98.8 percent of their DNA with humans. They spell T H E R E, our closest living relative. But as I see it, every living creature is in some way our relative, even trees. Only 800 million years ago, animal cells started appearing on Earth, comprised of mainly the same parts and following the same functions as plant cells, requiring oxygen, solar energy, minerals, nutrients, and water. This tree, Juniperus osteosperma, I think it's a juniper tree, was surviving in only inches of soil in an area of extreme heat and drought. I think our culture, our society has put itself above all living creatures, creating needs purely to support destructive economic practices. This tree doesn't require an Apple Watch, it doesn't stream its favorite shows, or have a microwave oven, pay health insurance, or drink grand iced caramel macchiatos. It is just a tree, but you rarely see geese riding jet skis or wearing designer clothing either. I think if we all want breathable air and drinkable water, we all need to learn how to live with less. And then there's a emoticon of the earth following that. And that's the end of the quote. Now, in this post, you can clearly pick up Brian's gripe with the world, especially where he references some of the unnecessary economic activities a tree doesn't need. Uh, he ticks off many of the trappings of young kids, Apple watches, TV shows, microwave ovens, health insurance, grand ice caramel macchiatos. The part that I think to emphasize here is where he says, I think our culture, our society has put itself above all living creatures. And I don't know what you guys think about that statement, given the possibility that he's put himself above another living creature or another creature that perhaps was living when he left her. So, next to that, he decries designer clothing. Take note, although Gabby isn't modeling designer clothing a couple of weeks later, she is wearing pretty snazzy heels. The point being, Brian's keep it natural and down to earth attitude may have been at odds with Gabby's. She's also keep it natural and down to earth, but a little bit less manic about it than he is, right? Uh, Gabby's kind of got a more colorful, friendly, fun, open and perhaps worldly approach to social media, right? Uh, and also compare Brian's dress code to hers. He's sort of take me as I am and, you know, the world is awesome, meaning the natural world and the unnatural world is horrible kind of thing. But then Brian is also very caught up in um, commercial media, the Simpsons, uh, certain kinds of Pulp Fiction and so on. Um, Brian also seems to think reading is superior to other consumption of media. He seems quite condescending, and it, it's quite an interesting sense we get Brian's condescension and the condescension of the officers during the Moab incident. It's quite an interesting parallel. It's looking down on, on someone else. It's, it's contempt, isn't it? Uh, one also gets a sense that Brian was pretty hung up on his own stuff. Whether you want to call it OCD or being an a-hole is up to you. Look at what he says about, there's nothing worse than losing my page. I'd say homicide is worse, a lot worse than that, than losing your page. On Ju I think running away the way he has is also a lot worse. On July 14th, about two weeks into the adventure together, Brian wrote, quoting Fight Club, quote, only after disaster can we be resurrected. It's only after you've lost everything that you're free to do anything. Nothing is static. Everything is evolving. Everything is falling apart. And that's the end of the quote. So look at these images that sort of go around July 14th. And then a year before that, July 15th. July 9th, the year previously, July 9th, um, you know, it's pretty scary, some of the things that he's, he's drawing. I mean, of all the things he can draw, th this is what he chooses to draw. So he seems like quite a gentle, natural spirit until you look at this stuff. In some, Brian's Instagram actually feels all over the place. If you zoom out of it, 
and you try and get an overview of all of it, I- including the tone of it and so on, it feels mismatched. Um, some of it is grounded and understated. Some of some other aspects are feel unbalanced. There are even tones and then neon madness. So one has a sense of a sensitive, unsocialized person who found someone to pin his hopes and dreams on only to be unhinged when she didn't meet his expectations and vice versa. And also get the sense that the world somehow isn't meeting his expectations, the media and so on. In the next episode, I'll be taking an in-depth look into Brian's psychology, citing Ernest Becker. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.